the VAR show the one place for your weekly football update hello everyone welcome to the webinar again and today we have got the emirates who has worked with a lot of famous clubs which includes anderlecht ligia warsaw and has also been instrumental in developing a lot of young talents like they have many few they have developed a lot of talents but few of which will be renowned will be the likes of lukaku romelu and jordan then you have adnan zanizza you have dendonka among a few of a, a lot of them and so First of all, I would like to thank God for coming and you know, like uh, giving His time to do this again. And uh, hopefully, it will be very, very helpful for everyone listening and uh, also participating. So, God, before we start, do you have anything to say? No, I. I wish everyone welcome. I'm glad that there are so many coaches who are interested in the in the what I'm going to say or what I'm going to answer. definitely and uh, okay like i'll start with rajat because uh, i know him from a barcelona time and he's a youth coach as of now so rajat do you have anything to say anything to ask anything to say okay good uh, uh, hi uh, nice to know about you and nice to know about your background uh, i want to ask uh, youth coaching specifically is very different in a lot of countries uh, some specifically focus a lot on 1v1s some go straight away to a lot of team topics how is it in belgium what is what's your uh, youth model like what do you focus on and uh, uh, like what's your idea to develop players so in belgium there are there are a lot of uh, clubs who are uh, now uh, preparing uh, players to to come to the first team and then to sell so Belgium is a country who is uh, yeah a step between the big step you know they 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 want to develop uh, players to sell them uh, with a higher budget and then that's uh, the main thing in Belgium and how i see uh, players uh, developing how 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 i see that is that uh, yeah you have to work with them Uh, when you look the first thing that you see it's it's mostly the first control if first control is is good then you see a player has the capacities to become a, a good player but then you need physical mentally uh, things like that but the first thing uh, if i go see a player from 12 or 14 or 16 or even a uh, higher level the first control is always the most important thing if you see that in a player who can take the control in movement then you see he has he has the basic and 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 that's very important definitely and you know like uh, i have one question from joel okay and he's not here so he has just sent in sent me this but so he, he has asked like in terms of nutrition How much do category one academies like the one you work with and and like spend on food and health? Yeah, if I talk with the 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 biggest clubs in in Belgium, they have a nutrition who helps them uh, to to give them uh, the the basic thing about nutrition and uh, what they can eat uh, before the game, after the game. how many time after the game how many time before the game uh, what is a good breakfast so now i am uh, with a uh, a third division club uh, first team and we are uh, working with uh, sportmet it's it's uh, it's people who who tested us on a physical way like uh, lactate uh, uh, endurance uh, and then they also uh, power uh, and then they give also what you can eat as breakfast they they ask the players uh, what they eat in the morning in the afternoon before a game etc etc and then they try to get it better because they also uh, measure their uh, 
the fat so uh, fat percentage and and then they see where where is the fat it's on the shoulder or, or the stomach it's different things what you can help with uh, a good nutrition definitely and you know like uh, i'll move on from that and uh Mahesh, you have anything to ask so we're talking about the youth development over here so I want to say that like, like uh, Belgium being in a 2002 or 2000, after 2002, they have a golden generation, yeah? So the likes of De Bruyne and Courtois, they are like a late developer. How will you notice or how will you develop them in late hours? In late hours? But it means they are, late they are known as the late developers. In the, uh, they are not good as uh, in their under 12, under 14 or under 15. They, are, they, de they get into national team at uh, under 19, I think. So how do you know about them? How do you know uh, the player is going to be a late developer or something? You never be sure uh, for hundred percent that the player who is fourteen or fifteen is going uh, to become a, a a player for for first team. You never know that. You, you see, you work with them. They the first thing that it's necessary is a good mentality. If you see, uh, for example, uh, I have a good uh, example, it's the two Lukaku's. You know, you have Romelu and you have Jordan. And I work with the two. And the youngest one, Jordan, is not the one who is all, always disciplined to do what he has to do. You know, Romelu, he has some goals I want to be there in in six months or I want to be there in 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 one year or I want to be when he was 16 he said my next step is to come in second team and play there and he was 16 and a half we played in second team and then he said my goal is for next year to become in first team at the end of that year he be, he, he played one or two no three three games with first team and then he was, uh, you, he, he always grow, you know, and he has the right mentality. So he did what he had to do to, to, to come there. And Jordan is more, uh, sees the day and we're going to see it tomorrow. But everything what is on the field with the ball, it was no problem. But everything uh, next to that, uh, behavior uh, on the field, uh, behavior in the gym, do the, the, the things he has to do, running without ball, uh, nutrition, uh, sleeping. That was a big problem. And you see now, maybe with the talent he had, he is, he is playing now for Lazio. But how many games he played there? So, if I read uh, newspapers or, or sites from uh, Italy and you hear always the same thing that's coming back he has now the latest the latest news was he came two, two, two or three times too late for an appointment with the team so he didn't play and that is that is Jordan he has the qualities like his brother but he has not the same mentality and then you you say maybe uh, when he's growing up, when he's becoming 21, 22, 23, like an adult, it will be improving, but it's not the case. So it, it's never 100% sure that a player is coming, is, is, he has the right skills, but mentality is, is, is very important. Definitely. So, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have a question to that. Uh, Gert, you said that, yes. like, uh, the, 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 fo the first touch is, or the uh, touch is very important while selecting or when you scout players. Suppose you have a very talented player, but that player's touch is not good. How would you work on that? When he has not the, the, the first control, good. Yeah. That's the question. Yes. Yeah. Work every day eh? with exercises uh, individually, especially individually, 
uh, and, 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 and starting with the, the basic control the ball, uh, standing still, then in movement, uh, then in speed movement. So you have to build it up step by step because you have a 10 year old and uh, he don't have a good control. You're not going to start with run to the ball and take the control because then it's 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 uh, it's very difficult. You you start with the 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 thing who is the most um, easy way to do it, and 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 always encourage him to to do it at home by hitting the wall, take the control, hit the wall, things like that, small things, but it's. The most uh, things that th you can improve with technical things is is to do in individually with players, with two or three, or even uh, give them homework and, and say, you're going to hit the ball now against the wall. There are easy things, easy exercises that you can give uh, uh, kids to do at home. And then you can see... Uh, how do they improve after two months or three months? Uh, Gert, I would like to come in here and uh, would just want to know a little bit more about uh, how many matches do uh, kids in Belgium get to play on an annual basis? And what is the uh, average, like, uh, do they come from far away or are, are they usually settled near and around the academy? Um, because... Uh, uh, like, for example, here we have a problem. If, if the academy is more than five kilometers, play, uh, uh, parents won't bring them. So, yeah. these two things, matches and the distance traveled by yeah. the kids. I, yeah, I understand. Because I, I talk now for, for professional clubs. Yeah, And Belgium is a small country. When you pass Belgium from, from left to right, you have 350 kilometers. And you pass from... Uh, up, down, it's maybe 300. So it's not so big, Belgium. And the academies, I talk now for Anderlecht, for example. Uh, Anderlecht is, is, is in the middle of Belgium. And it's the capital, Brussels. And most of the players, they come from around 60 kilometers around the capital. And if they come from... And, and these kids, they are usually in a school where they can sleep, but it's not from Anderlecht, it's only the school. And they work with two schools together, a French and a Dutch school, where they can play uh, or where they get uh, training from uh, Anderlecht coaches in the morning and in the evening they go to the club and then they go to back to the school to sleep. But that's... Uh, 60 players for example yeah the rest they are coming with with buses with buses around 60 kilometers and they have uh, six or seven buses they go east west uh, you know north south they pick up the children in the morning they, they they put them to school they pick up the children from the school they go to training at six o'clock in the evening, training is finished, they take the children and they put them home again. So the day is, is long for the children. Sometimes they, they pick children up at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. They go to school at 8, 8.30. Yeah, in the evening they have training at 6 o'clock. When they are home, it's maybe 10, 10.30. Maybe homework for school. Then they go sleep and then the day starts again. So that's how big clubs uh, usually work. And they have matches every weekend, almost every weekend? Uh, every weekend, yes. They have from uh, under 12, 13, they play in the morning. Yeah, uh, at home. Uh, 14, 16, uh, 14, 15, they play uh, away in the morning. And then uh, 16, 17, they play uh, in the afternoon on Saturday. And then the rest, the highest uh, levels, 
they play in the afternoon, but away. So there are always four teams, four teams that go, that plays in the morning, two at home, two away, and four teams that play in the afternoon, two at home, two away. So they play always at the same moment. It can be 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but always on the same, uh, on the same day. Every, except second team, they play normally on Fridays, when the first team is playing on Saturday or Sunday. Definitely. And you know, like, uh, now uh, we have another question from Nissan. So Nishan, if you have any question, please uh, unmute yourself and ask. You have to unmute yourself. Okay. In, in the meanwhile, I'll come uh, come up with one more question. Uh, so, uh, so this was right. Right now, I asked about the academies and uh, in general about the players. Now, coming to coaches. So, how how difficult or how uh, easy? It, I def no, definitely, it's not easy. Is to uh, is, is making a career in coaching in Belgium. Right, it's becoming very difficult because you know uh, when they started school from U UEFA, from European uh, Union, they you have to have a diploma for coaching on the highest level uh, of national youth. You need uh, a diploma A, yeah. You start with C, B, A, and then you have pro license. Yeah, for professional uh, coaches who, who coach in uh, first division and second division, then you need a pro license. But for youth, you need a, a, a diploma. And uh, as as more as the years go by, more coaches follows or ex uh, players follow the. The, the diplomas to get a diploma to follow the lessons to get a diploma and there are many coaches now who yeah are 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 not working they they don't find work so they go abroad but it's still you need to know some people who can bring you there or it's it's very difficult okay so uh, nishan now you can ask i think you have unmuted yourself uh, yeah, like, uh, I just want to ask, like, uh, uh, what do you, like, uh, when you go to scouting, like, what's the first thing you notice about the players? Like, what's the first initial observation about you to the players? Yeah. It's, uh, it's depending on, on which position. Uh, so, but, but first thing, if, if you scout for a young guy, the first control is the most important thing. And then you have skills like uh, for an attacker, like speed, uh, how is his dribble, make, is, is he making actions, uh, how is he running. Um, and for midfielders, it's mostly how he is uh, available when somebody else has the ball, uh, he's taking good position, he's smart uh, in the way of moving, uh, does he have a good long ball. Uh, can he run for 90 minutes or 70 or 80 minutes, how, the way they, they play in youth? Uh, and defender is, is mostly yeah, on the highest level. It's not only about defending, but also about attacking and, and, and some technical skills. He, he can give a good pass, he's available, he, he, can, uh, he can make an action. Uh, even when he is in difficult situations, does he come out? Does he he he's, he's, he's looking for uh, solutions? Does he find the solutions? Uh, things like that. It's 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 yeah. And then the height also for a keeper, for example, or for the defender. Uh, yeah. When it's not only to see the 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 player himself, but also the parents. 
when you see you you have to scout the defender and he is 13 14 years old or 12 and you see the parents and the parents are uh, 170 the father and 165 the mother then you you will be sure that the guy is not gonna be 190 you yeah, see sure. and in in what uh, families uh, background it's important uh, where he goes to school what he does in school uh, what's his mentality talk with uh, uh, the coach or the club where he's playing when you scout him uh, what's his his, uh, his mentality how he behaves yeah many things are coming back uh, when you you scout when you scout uh, a young guy it's not one time you go see him sometimes you see immediately yes it would be for 90 percent uh, a player for first team but you never know that's why i say 90 percent but there are many players I, I have seen before that i said it will be difficult to come in first team and i said about players i'm 90 percent sure it will be in first team and both sides i was wrong so the one i thought he will never play in first team he played in first team and the one i thought he gonna play in first team he never did so mm. there are many steps that when you come at the at the point of the pyramid yeah that's the the, the most difficult thing the last step from second team from young guys from under 21 here in belgium for example to to make the step to first team that's the most difficult thing uh, in football here and and do you do you give them career counseling as well for example you know that 80% of them will not be able to make as football player so uh, is that is that actively encouraged that they also simultaneously go to college or try to have uh, some other career because yeah, it's, it's it's very important especially in in underlicht that i said already that they they work with two schools it's a school for uh, uh, players or, or, or guys or, 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 or uh, girls to have a, a higher diploma than the other school. The other school is more uh, uh, based on a, on a lower level, but still it's important to get their diploma when they are 18 years. So everyone like the Donker, Lukaku, Jordan and, and Romelu, Pra, Tielemans, they all get their diplomas when they were 18. And then when they are, they couldn't, uh, or, or they, they have an injury, they can always go to college uh, afterwards. So it's very important that they get their degree from secondary school here in, uh, in Belgium. Yeah, teams are, are yeah. And also the, the, the government is, is uh, promoting it that they can they can have their uh, their diplomas it's not easy because studying on a high level and playing football on a high level what i say it's from 6 or 60 or 30 in the morning till 11 o'clock in the evening and then back again uh, the other day so it's 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 very difficult it's demanding Definitely, and I, I have one question on that. Like, uh, Gerd, you said that going from maybe the under 21s to the main team is very difficult in Belgium or in Anderlecht. So, how do you know that a player is ready for the main team? You know, like many a times you have uh, coaches who put maybe young players who are not ready to be in the main team. How do you put that criteria that this player is ready for the main team? When they are ready, when we think we they are ready then we say to the first team coaches or the staff from first team let them try to train a week with first team if it's possible it's not always possible or in in the case it's not possible then uh, we ask the staff and it can be the assistant coach or uh, or the second assistant coach that come watch games and training sessions and they see for themselves uh, what the player can do at, the, at that moment. 
and we can only give uh, yeah something to the to the staff from first team i think this player uh, deserves a chance training with the first team and it can be in the first weeks of the of the of the season it can be at the last weeks of the season it can be uh, when there is a a break a break for uh, national teams when they have less players on training uh, for example with Anderlecht they, they they are going away for a national team one week so that's the 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 period who is the most uh, important for for players to get a test in first team Definitely, and you know, like uh, on on that note, uh, Edilu, do you have any question? Yeah, uh, I have a question. Thank you for the. Okay, thank you, Shubhashi. You are uh, inviting me this show, and thank you, Coach, uh, meeting you. My question is, uh, I I want to know the, the organization structure of youth developments, and. Uh, also, uh, how do we uh, identify talents? Uh, and uh, some coach-related uh, things. Uh, what is the most important thing? Is uh, uh, organization structure or uh, talent identification or uh, educating coaches to? Use development when you putting in one, two, or three uh, in the rank. Okay, so I'll start with uh, organization. So youth organization in Anderlecht is starting with uh, players from four or five years old. When they are four or five years old, they go in a in a um, indoor. You know, in inside, where there is yeah. a, a fake grass, or how you say that in English? Artificial. Yeah, artificial uh, grass, and they play there, and they have coordination with hands, with feet, but only on the on the playing side, so that they they used to have the ball to see the ball, how is the ball rolling, how when the ball comes to them how they react, everything like that. Then they have academy from six years old till 10 years old. That's the lower part of the, of the youth. And they train, they play five against five uh, with keeper. So they play five with keeper against five with keeper. And they always work in, in, in sort of uh, a circuit. On the on training, so they have four coaches on the field. They take six years old and seven years old together, and they train uh, fifteen or twenty minutes with one coach. And one coach, they have uh, they have all always a team. Uh, uh, for example, control the ball and pass the ball. There are ones who has dribble. So, and they are ones who have position game or, or uh, a game, five against five. So they have four stations where they work 15 or 20 minutes. And after the 15, 20 minutes, they go to the next trainer and they have another team. You know, that's how they work with the younger guys. Always with four coaches on the field, but in small groups small groups from 10 players, two teams together, and they work in teams 15 or 20 minutes. When they come to 11, yeah, it's more, uh, I'm not going to say tactical, but positions on the field. They play 11, uh, they play 11, 12 and 13. I think they play nine against nine. So they take a little bit of position where they can play, but every player has to play in each position. They have to play four or five positions in the game 
and they so they they adapt to several positions yeah and when they come to 15 16 17 19 21 yeah it's more on tactical basis uh more physical they go to gym uh and things like that and for the coaches how they develop, develop coaches they come every six or eight weeks together with all the coaches they uh they take a team uh for example how do you uh uh get more people in 16 uh out of the cross and then several uh, coaches they can work on the on that on that team they come together and they work out some some exercises and so one helps the other and so so you develop coaches by <coughs> sorry by uh talking more about football and exercises on training and games uh analyzing games what can be better or not so i hope that was an answer on the question yeah i think so i think it got cut out for now so i'll just try putting him back so i wanted to ask uh, before we before he comes in okay and i'll, I'll ask you one question good since you have managed in the young and also you have managed in the uh, senior side as a coach how do you change your philosophy going from managing the youngsters to managing the senior side <laughs> that's uh, very easy <laughs> by by playing for winning if you have an adult team you play to win if you coach a young team you coach them to get better not to win you play for winning of course you ask them to play for winning but you take more risk in your game like building up for example uh like taking more risk in your game by and and let them do some mistakes uh it's not it's not becoming champion that is on the on the first uh thing that's important it's not the 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 the, the most important thing in youth in youth you play and you you train to get better and you come to the second team maybe then but mostly anderlecht they ask to get results in tournaments when you go on tournament uh, in holland or in germany or in france they ask to get in the semi-finals it's not an obligation but there you play for winning a cup you play for winning a championship but you know in anderlecht uh, the best players if they are ready they play one category higher so 14 year old who plays in under 15 maybe plays in under 16 to make it more difficult for the player because if they are ready physically and and mentally and and strong enough they play one category higher than normally so there are maybe 10 players in the academy who play one year old uh, one year older than they have to be so to make it difficult if they play uh, i'm practically sure if they play all in their category they are in every category champion Sure. Uh, I, I just have a question and uh, it is sent in by uh, Mahesh and he is there but he could not ask due to the connectivity. He has said that, can you share some training sessions for Youth Academy? Share? Uh, yeah. And how? How? I by don't exercises? Know. Yeah, maybe exercises something? Yeah? Yeah, I, I can, think so. I can give you some exercises. Uh, I can send them to you by email. Sure, I think that would be good. I think you can do that. 
Yeah. Uh, like a PDF or like you said by via email or something. Yeah. I will sure. send. Okay and no uh, okay. Yeah, Nishan, do you have anything to ask? I don't want to continuously keep asking. Yeah, just one question. Like, uh, as Belgium is playing like too vast like uh, football in European, like, what do you think uh, the Belgian national team is lacking of than or any other European teams? I didn't completely understand the question. I'm sorry. Okay, like I'm saying that like. Simply, what uh, what is Belgian football national team is like uh, lacking of? Can you hear me? Yeah. What is Belgium? I. So what, what? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I? I'll just interpret it. And uh, so, because uh, Belgium team have a good team, but uh, they are not winning. So, what are they lacking? I think that is what he wants to ask. Ah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank I'm you. sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, I think in the last uh, World Cup they 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 had some uh, luck by beating Korea uh, and they were good against Brazil and then against France in semi-finals they get a goal on corner but I think if you see the game they were even better than France who was more defending than, than, than Belgium. So, in these tournaments, you need a little bit of luck. And they had luck in the eight, in the, uh, in the 16 finals, or, yeah, not in the quarter, but the, the eight finals. They had some luck. And in the semi finals, they, they, they missed the luck to, to, to go in final. But I think. Uh, when you beat two times uh, England in uh, for the third and the fourth place, and in the, in the quarterfinals, then you prove that you have a good team. But yeah, sometimes you need the luck. I, I think they had a really good team. They played a good tournament, but they missed uh, they missed a little bit the luck to to get to get in the finals. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So I, I have one last question before we end up, okay? And Gert, it's like, uh, uh, it's like many of us, many of the coaches, uh, we see many foreign coaches like uh, the high profile, like maybe Guardiola or Klopp, and we try to take in what they try to implement, like how, like, but of course that is not successful because they have a good player, they have the players that is suited and who can play that. Suppose you have to take inspiration from some other coach how do you uh, how do you take the idea and put it in your work yeah i think first of all when you were a player you you pick up some things from the the, the coaches you had as a player that's first of all and then you see coaches coach their teams on the highest level on television and then you you try not to copy them, but you take always something from each coach. When you see a coach, uh, like for example, you say Klopp, when you see him at the, at the, at the side of the field, he is always yeah, playing with the team. Yeah? You see him coach uh, very aggressively. Uh, yeah, he, he has the... the he is fighting with them. If you understand what I'm, I'm, I'm saying, yeah, that you see that he is passionate about the game, and that is something that I like also uh, when I coach. And the, the next thing is, uh, yeah, people manager is is very important for the moment in football. How to 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 keep everyone satisfied especially in the first team when you have to uh, take 18 players for the squad for the uh, for the game and you leave all 10 at home how to keep 28 players happy yeah, that's something which is very important now and when you see where where 
how he is uh, coping with all the team when they get from the field, when they lose, when they win. Yeah, it's it's something I, I want to do also. Sure. Uh, so now we have like two more questions got before we end up. We have one from Ashish. Ashish, please unmute yourself and ask. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. So I would like to ask one question. It's like uh, when you when you scout players, you know, uh, you know, you you made a selection, you know, for the players. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what are the pro procedures of selection? I mean, so uh, you do some shooting drills, uh, or ninety minutes, uh, fifteen or twenty minutes game. Uh, you watch their passing, shootings, their how their left foot and right foot works. Uh, I mean, how you actually categorize the players, you know? What are the procedures of selection? Uh, how you work with them or how you... Uh, yeah, I'm, how you see uh, the I player? mean, yeah, if you have to, you know, uh, categorize the players, uh, how you, how, what are the procedures of selection? Uh, just like uh, 15 or 20 minutes game, you watch from them or you do some shooting drills. Uh, you see the most... The most things you see in a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the most important. And uh, when you have them, when they come to you and they go on a trial, yeah, yeah, you see the most things in games. And not in games by 11 against 11, but more yeah. in games, 4 against 4, 5 against 5, 2 yeah, against yeah, yeah. 2. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Then you see two, and yeah. how they... Like you say, can they they, yeah. they pass the ball? Can they run free? Uh, can they move yeah. smart? Uh, is he available? Uh, how is he? Uh, can he cope with uh, getting goals? Yeah, and they, uh, yeah, and uh, how they react when they they lose one yeah. zero? How they react when uh, they they win two or three uh, yeah. zero? It's it's very important to get a player in 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 one hour. It's it's very uh, difficult yeah. to get a player so, in, field, yeah, so but it's, it's in, in it's games, you... yeah. Okay. In small games, you see the most, I the most things by by yeah. two feet, like you say. Yeah. You see every practically everything. Yeah, practically everything. Just like not only in games, but um, I mean, some shooting drills is about how his left foot works, his right foot works, his vision. You know, in two versus yeah. two, three versus three. Yeah, this is yeah, procedures. Yeah, yeah. Like like two feet, use your two feet. It's very important yeah. in youth. If you yeah. don't start it when you are eight or nine years old, it's getting yeah. more difficult when you grow up. So uh, yeah. here, here they 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 work very. Uh, yeah, uh, professional. They take very time, uh, much time to to work at the two feet, and they yeah. they they say <laughs> that they have to work on their two feet because when you have a child and who is ten years old, they always search for their good foot. Yeah, you have to to say to them, you have yeah. you have to, yeah. Use yeah, yes. two feet, even if it's. I went to to uh, UAE the last UAE, two yeah. years. Yeah, it was disaster. The second foot, and it's yeah. it's like they 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 shoot for the first time when you do some uh, shooting drills. Yeah? yeah, and you go to the other side, yeah. and they have to shoot with left. Yeah. Left. It was disaster to see so if you are not yeah. used to do it from eight nine ten years old yeah yeah when you are 16 17 forget it uh, okay so uh, so these are the these are the things what you categorize the player yes but uh, to to uh, i mean the, i mean i want to ask you another question yes there uh, what are the procedures of trials I mean the part of selection, you know. Uh, what does uh, uh, nothing? To select the nothing. Thing? Yeah. Nothing. Just to, to come to come at trials, you don't yeah, yeah, have sure. to be a great player. Everyone can come. Yeah. They have. Yeah. They have. Uh, 
how you say that in uh, in Belgium, you have yes. talent days. Yes. Yeah? And yes. they put it on the side from Anderlecht. Uh, yeah. Weekend, weekend, or 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 in in uh, in times of vacation in school, they yes. have one week talent days from Monday to Friday. Everyone can yeah. come. So you, uh, so you, every, you, yeah. For 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 the trial, uh, so you players, you select players only from the ninety minutes game, or you do some fitness tests for the players. Just like you have to watch the stamina of the players, you know. It it depends with age. I think age, when oh, you okay. it's it's only with the second team and first team you you make some physical tests uh, if physical to tests, see yeah. if there are no injuries or or something like that. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, but yes. but uh, because they have a contract then, and they will okay. see if everything is okay uh, uh, on the side from uh, medical. If everything is okay, and uh, if not, then there will be no contract. There will be no contract signing. If they see that the, the for example, uh, the knee is not good, or uh, the back is not good, or, or things like that, yeah. then there will be no yeah. signing of a contract. But yeah. not no, in youth. But... In youth, it's only about technical, only the game. Yeah. So currently, due to due to this pandemic, the most of the clubs, you know, most of the clubs' youths are been on hold. So how are they uh, working for their fitness in this pandemic? Now, when you with the COVID, you you mean? Yeah, yeah, because of COVID, yeah. Yeah, uh, we we give them a a, a program where ah, they okay. do uh, a lot of running. Running. Yes, and also uh, prevention, prevention for injuries, uh, like yes. core stability, uh, but not not many things about uh, about um, uh, power. So it's only core stability and uh, stabilization exercises and running. They get a program where they run four times a week. And they do what two time? times a week uh, core stability and uh, yeah. and uh, stabilization. So nothing more. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Please. So on that note, I'll take one last question. And it's from Nishan. Nishan, please ask your question. Yeah, my question is regarding to the Belgian national team. Uh, like uh, everyone knows that Belgium national team is like developing like very like uh, quicker in these last three four years. Like, mm -hmm. what do you think is the main reason behind the massive quick succession of like Belgium national team in these last three to four years? Many players go abroad. They go to big clubs. They play in the in the in the on the highest level in Europe. They play in Italy. They play in England. They play in Germany. Uh, that's why they are on a on a on a better uh, level than 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 ten or fifteen years ago. You have uh, Hazard, you have Lukaku, you have Alderweireld, you have Courtois. You see where they play? They play yeah. all abroad. There is no player from Belgium who plays in a Belgium competition. All the players play in a big competition. Oh, and they play in the biggest clubs. So they have to improve. It's 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 the it's it's like that. If they play in Belgium, I think uh, they they won't be on the level that they they play now. Yeah. So like uh, as you said, like uh, every players are play playing in uh, in the Premier League and like Bundesliga. Like, uh, yeah. don't you think like uh, Belgian uh, domestic uh, leagues are not uh, gaining much more publicity? Yes. It's like that. It's not the, that they're gonna show the Belgium league in 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 uh, in Germany or in uh, in England or I don't think I, I'm I'm practically sure that they don't uh, give it like we see the Premier League here in Belgium. We see the Bundesliga here. We see uh, the Spanish league here. We can see every big league and and you have France, you have Spain, you have England, you have Germany. These are the biggest uh, competitions 
in Europe. But it's not Belgium, it's not Holland, it's not uh, even Portugal. The, most, good, yes. the four biggest, and, and there the players play. They play in the Bundesliga, they play in the Premier League. Premier League. And in Spanish they play, League also. In they play in Italy. That's, uh, that's yeah. how it is. Uh, yeah, that's much uh, from me. Thank you. Please. So, you know, on that note, I think we'll uh, wrap it up and uh, once again, thank you so much, Gert, for giving almost one hour of your time and uh, hopefully, Please. like, uh, people have learned something and hopefully they'll learn more when you send the PDF or file what you have. I think they are eagerly waiting and I think they'll uh, ask me, so Gert, please send it fast. <laughs> okay, I will. And, uh, thank you once again, Gert, for coming. You have it tomorrow. Take care, stay safe. You have it tomorrow. Sure, thank you so okay. much. Gert. It's my, my pleasure. Okay, thank you very much. I wish all, all of you. I enjoyed your class. Yeah. Okay. Much more motivation, you know, for the youths. I learned every, you know. It's important. It's, it's important know, to. Yeah, your, yeah, your little words are very much, you know, it catches my brain, you know. You know, it's very inspiring. Very good. Very important for See players. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, bye-bye.